and welcome to vlog number 16. At last I'm making a start on the Panzer IV F2, and in this episode you'll see the process I go through to create the 3D prints. The Panzer IV was the real workhorse of the German army in the Second World War, evolving into many variants. It became so successful that its basic form was adapted for a wide variety of roles. The F2 was the first long-barreled variant, and I've chosen to recreate one of the earliest F2s from Operation Barbarossa, Germany's invasion of Russia, and specifically the assault on Stalingrad. The CAD model for the Panzer IV was created several months ago. I particularly enjoy the design work on the computer, as it's a lot cleaner than sculpting at the workbench. I try and go as far as I can with the detail, as I know this is what really makes the model sparkle. With the 3D model completed, I then generate these rendered images, which give a much better impression of how the final model will look. I carefully compare these to photographs, checking to see that everything looks just right, before I start 3D printing. Once I'm happy, then I move on to the next stage. This involves breaking the model down into its component form, so that it can be 3D printed, moulded and cast. You can get an idea of the parts breakdown here, where each colour represents a separate job for the 3D printer. I'm going to be printing all of these parts on my photocentric Precision 1.5 3D printer in resin. The individual parts are then imported into the slicer software for the 3D printer, where they're analysed for errors. You can see the layers don't look very logical. Anything flagged in red or transparent won't print. These errors have to be fixed in the modelling software, before being checked again in the slicer. The errors are now fixed and there are no transparent or red flagged areas. This debugging stage can take quite a while, as there can be a variety of different problems to solve. This time the slicer looks good. I think we'll go with this version. Now I adjust the angle of the print to try and get the best result, and let the software automatically generate the support structure. A few days later, and all of the prints are done. They're printed in a unique blue resin that is specifically engineered for making vulcanised moulds, which is exactly what I need. You can find out more about vulcanised moulds in my how-to series. I always try and add as much detail as I can to the 3D model. My theory is, if it prints the detail, great. If not, at least I tried. In this case, everything printed. I was totally amazed at the result I got. German tanks have a lot of detail, and everything came out incredibly well. I do have some cleaning up to do, and a few layer lines to remove, but I was honestly blown away by the results I got, particularly on the tracks and running gear. My next task is to remove the support material. For this, I use some sharp nail cutters, which I have just for this purpose. This is a very messy job, with the brittle resin flying everywhere. But I have to be very careful, just nibbling away, as the resin is so brittle I can easily break off some of the detail by accident. There's a real forest of supports at the back of the part, and I can be less careful cutting the ends off these than I have to be where the supports join the actual part. It's best to go slowly, especially as it takes eight hours to print another side of wheels and tracks. The diagonal struts between the road wheels and upper rollers are not only to strengthen the master, but allow the metal to flow into the part when the mould is made. They'll be cut off the castings when the Panzer IV is in production. Now for the exciting bit, revealing the part.
You can see the parts come out well, but I have damaged a small part of the upper run of track. Don't worry, this is a spare anyway. If you wondered how much support material there was, here you go. This is for the bin. And these are all the parts free from their supports. The undersides will get a clean up, and there are a few damaged edges where the supports didn't come away cleanly, but nothing I can't fix. The first stage is to clean up all the major parts as thoroughly as possible, and then begin fitting them together. The smaller parts will be converted into metal masters, using my usual method of cold cure silicon moulds. Before I go too far, I have to sculpt a base for the Panzer IV. This was built up from a sheet of tufnel in milliput. A combination of milliput and granite chips were then pressed into the surface. This is to recreate the ruins of Stalingrad, where the Panzer IV is to be set. Before I send the base off for moulding and casting in resin, let's take a look at the Panzer IV mocked up. Don't forget there's still a lot of detail to add. Spare tracks, tools, the aerial, the exhaust, and stowage. There will of course be optional figures for the Panzer IV. I'm planning to have the tank commander in the cupola, asking directions from a soldier on the ground. I think this will make a great diorama, and complement the Tiger I and Sherman already in the range. In the next episode of my vlog, you'll see the final stages of getting the Panzer IV into production, as well as the finished model. To find out more about the Panzer IV, follow the link in the description. I hope you enjoyed my vlog. If you did, hit the like button, share and subscribe to my channel, so you can see the next episode when it goes live. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments, and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.